and uh, she is also trained in 2D and 3D facial reconstruction at Central Forensic Science Laboratory, Chandigarh, uh, in the year of 2016, and also went to the fellowship in forensic odontology from SDM Darwad under uh, Dr. Ashit Acharya sir in the year of 2018. She has uh, authorized and co-authored over 30 publications in international and national uh, high impact factor journals, including many systematic uh, and scoping uh, reviews. And I think uh, she, uh, ma'am has done a few uh, chapters in books also. And her research is uh, well received in a uh, scientific committee with over 340 citations she has reached out to the scientific uh, committee and students, both national and international, with many workshops and lectures in her areas of expertise and interest. We, uh, Savata Dental College and uh, CIMATS, uh, Savata Institute of Medical and Technical Sciences, and uh, from the Department of Forensic Odontology, I am welcoming you to this online platform, ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Abirami. Uh, is my voice clear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for this opportunity uh, for the beginning. And uh, shall I share my screen first? Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, today I'm here for dental age estimation, a multidisciplinary approach. Actually, before uh, this, um, I definitely would like to thank Dr. Abhirami for giving me this opportunity. But you know, Dr. Abirami, that uh, your association with us, uh, when you tell us to take lectures, every time you tell us to take lecture, there is a storm here in Delhi and there is a lot of rainfall in Delhi. So I was really uh, hoping that the last time what happened should not happen this time. So yes, yeah. I but, have uh, remembered that uh, Dr. Raman Chaudhary sir yeah, was flying here and right. there. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Today also we had a lot of uh, rainfall in the morning. But here it is normal, ma'am. Luckily, yes. uh, it, it's fine now. So you You're can hear lucky. Me. Too lucky. <laughs> yeah. So you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. So dental age estimation, it's, it's a topic uh, in forensics, which is very, very close to my heart. I work a lot in this aspect, practically, theoretically, writing papers, publishing, doing uh, on forensic on-field scenarios. But, you know, um, there's a catch, you know, talking about age and that too by a woman. I mean, it's, it's a, a dichotomy. But yeah, I am interested in this field. So I'm here right before you to speak on this. And um, my disclaimer definitely is that I don't know everything about the subject. I have definitely, you know, improvised on it by working practically in this field. And that's what here I am to share with you. I'm here to take you to a journey with me, which I have traveled and maybe, you know, you can learn two things on the way and maybe teach me a few things on the way. This is definitely not exhaustive and complete, but yes, learning is never complete. So we are here to learn from each other. I have also included, I'm an orthodontist, a clinical practitioner also. So I have also taken a few of uh, radiographs and photographs of my patients after taking due consent from the patients just for the explanation of the academic purpose. This is my team. I would like to introduce my team because we never work alone. We always work in a team and that's how it should be. And since my topic itself says it's a multidisciplinary approach, so definitely that we would like to involve people from the other branches and we come together on a common platform and share our common interest in age estimation. Dr. Aman Chaudhary is the, the first person and he's the professor in oral pathology in Faculty of Dentistry, Jamia Milia Islamia. The second is uh, Wanshika Jain. She was a student with me and the first article that we published in a PubMed index, index publication, she was just in second year. So I would just like to tell you that there's no age to start. You can start anywhere, everywhere. You just need to make a beginning. And after that, she has been publishing regularly with us. And now she's currently employed in DRDO, which is a defense research organization in India and highly reputed. And so, you know, it works a great deal. Professor Deepika Bablani is also a professor in oral pathology in our own institute. And we all work together on common platforms and dental age estimation is one of them. Well, age, we've talked about of late, what we've, of what we've been hearing about age is basically about vaccination. So one day a ruling comes that, okay, 
about 60 or senior citizens are going to get the vaccination. Then another ruling comes that, okay, about 18 is going to get the vaccination. But then how do you determine 18 and 60, 65? How do you determine that? So that's what we are here to talk about. But apart from that, you know, India has a lot of other problems also to face. I'm not saying that this is not the problem of the world, but yes, we have our fair share of them. We are a developing country. We have a lot of issues related to the birth registration. You know, in Europe, the birth registration, Dr. Emilio is here in this lecture itself. And uh, there, you know, 100% birth registration is there. But in our case, it is still 60 to 70%. So you can imagine that if it's not 100%, we have to look for other ways to find out the age. There's a lot of child marriage, which is uh, prevalent in India. And according to the UNICEF data, one in four young women in India are married before their 18th birthday. 102 million married women are below the age of 15 years. So you can imagine the plight. And of late, if you look at the newspapers, you know, these COVID times have made the situation so bad that people are taking the girls out of the schools and marrying them off because of the financial constraints. So, you know, age is a, has a lot of factor to play because you can't marry a girl before the 18 years of age. There are so, so many crimes which are happening in India and they are rampant on the rise and they're all being, uh, you know, performed by juveniles. But how do you determine the age of the juveniles? Everybody, I think, resonates with the Nirbhya uh, rape case that happened um, a few years back in India. And it's very, very close to our hearts because we were really shocked by that incident. And the only person who was most brutal was a juvenile and he was not given a due sentence just because of two months of lack. So, you know, age becomes so important in these crimes. Then there is so much of child labor. You have seen this labor here and there everywhere around you, but do you report that? No, because you don't even know whether the person has the right um, uh, documents or not. How will you determine the age? So we have to look for the other parameters to determine the age. Then migration is a very big problem these days. There is so much of unrest in so many places and many of the migrants are coming to India or coming to or going to the various places and they have their own benefits related to the migration policies. But for that, we need to ascertain the age, the right age of the migrants. So, you know, age is really, really important to diagnose. Well, my contents uh, for this lecture are uh, primarily divided into definition, importance, application, methods of assessment, interdisciplinary approach, as this is the main uh, criteria for my topic today and the research prospects. I'll be discussing everything and I'll be giving a brief, you know, a, a brief overview of everything because it's a huge topic. You can't just complete it in one hour. And, you know, and also it's difficult to hold anybody's attention greater than 45 to 50 minutes. So I'll just try to give you short capsules about everything. So according to the definition, Ritz and Tim said that the forensic age estimation refers to the expertise in forensic medicine, which aims to define in the most accurate way the chronological age of the person of an unknown age involved in judicial or, or legal proceedings. And anything which has to be submitted to the court has to have a certain amount of accuracy. And when you don't know, when the age is unknown, you have to look for more than one method to reach to a conclusion. It may be a combination of dental, skeletal, it may be a combination of two or three dental methods, but yes, definitely. If you have to produce something in the court, it has to be with the certain degree of accuracy. So where did the age uh, word it comes from? It, it is basically a social construction. It's a communist entry. But, you know, uh, the one thing that if you, if you go back and think that nowadays it is possible to change the gender, but you cannot change the age. So this is a social construction which is stuck onto you for life. It keeps on changing and you need to continuously in, evolve and continuously determine the age. Why it's important in health sciences? 
Well, we as orthodontists, you know, we take use of the growth remaining of the aid status a lot in our practice because there's so many treatments. These are my own patients' photographs that I've taken. And if you see in the photograph, the upper jaw, the maxilla is backwardly placed, the lower jaw is forwardly placed, and we've given a face mask to the patient, and you can see the results. But, you know, there's an uh, age to it. If I try to give the same treatment when the growth status is complete for the patient, then this won't work. So in a lot of our practices and treatment options, we need to determine the growth status of the patient. And for that, definitely we need to assess the age of the patient. We also need to know not only the dental age, but the skeletal age of the patient. And even the endocrinologist or the pediatricians or the pedodontist, you know, they take a lot uh, into their practice, the skeletal age and the dental age phenomenon, not only for the diagnosis, but also to determine the prognosis. If the same patient, you know, I leave without treatment, the lower jaw is going to grow because the growth is still remaining. So the prognosis also is being determined by this age status. So it's very, very important in age. Now when we come to forensics, not only in the health sciences that we talked in the earlier slide, but when we talk about forensics, you won't get a complete face, you won't get a complete structure. These are a few of the uh, cases which had come to us, so I would prefer that you do not take any photographs in this. But I would just like to highlight that these are the cases that are going to come to you sometimes in forensics for comparative or for reconstructive identification. Now in reconstructive identification, we mean that we don't know anything about the case. We don't know the age, we don't know anything about the case and we have to reconstruct that. In comparative, you still have some photograph or something to go back to and you have to compare it to a known age. So in both the cases, we need to ascertain which method is most applicable for determination of age. When you talk about the medical board, well, the medical board will not tell you, okay, there's a dentist in a government college and this is a case, uh, this is a rape case or this is a, a homicide case or any mass disaster case and you just get a dentist here and you just tell us, okay, this, this is the skull of the, page, of the, of the individual or this is, these are the records of the individual and now you tell us the age. This doesn't happen. Wherever you go for age assessment and a forensic case comes to you, there is a board which is set up. And that board has primarily three major constituents. You can have others also, but dentist, radiologist, and general physician are a must in this board. So as I said, it is a multidisciplinary approach. Not one person can tell you, okay, this is the right age. A dentist cannot tell you, a radiologist cannot tell you, but a, a general physician cannot tell you. But they can combine their results and reach to a certain level of accuracy. There is an AFCARD, which is a study group in forensic age diagnostic. I found their way to be most comprehensive of all. And this should be adopted because they have taken all the ages together. The developmental age, which is basically determined by the increase in height, weight, stature, that's basically the developmental age. And there are norms in each population for that. If you look at the Indian norms, even the Indian pediatrics department, they have published so many norms and they're continuously being updated. So for the developmental age, the physical age, we have to look for those parameters based on the physical examination. Along with that, they have the dental age criteria and the skeletal age criteria. And for the skeletal age criteria, they have taken the clavicle, the hand wrist, and for dental age, they have taken the OPGs. So this is a primary constituent. You can keep on improving it. You can add on to it. But this is a basic constituent that you should have. When we talk about dental age, which we are here to talk about today, why is the dental age so important? Why are teeth so important? You know, in any forensic scenario, whether you have a mass disaster, you have any, any case of crime or even a civil case, a criminal case, any case you have, these teeth are the ones which are highly mineralized. And you know, they're the last ones to break, they're the last ones to disintegrate, and they have a lot of DNA in the pulp in them. So it is very, very important for the forensic point of view. It also has a low variability related to the age, and you have certain parameters for its eruption, mineralization, you have certain norms, certain parameters available for it, which you can easily compare with the records that you are made available to. 
They're the last ones to be destroyed under pressure or temperature. And more or less, you know, any, any ethnic community will have dentists which will be having good record system of the, of the dentition or the radiographs or the study cars, you know, they would be having something or the other related to the teeth, which they might not be having related to the medical, uh, uh, medical history. So definitely the record system in dentistry is much better than, than in the other systems. And that plays a role when we talk about the forensic age estimation. So based, uh, the, they can be classified in different ways, how you can classify the dental age. You can classify it into different ways. You can classify it on the basis, basis of uh, stages of development, on the basis of how you estimate the age, whether it is comparative or calculative, or also on the methods of examination. Based on stages, you have prenatal, natal, postnatal, children and adolescents and adults. But on method of estimation, you have comparative or calculative. When we talk about comparative, you know, comparative is, you know, as it explains itself, something to compare to. Calculative is that you're calculating based on any regression formulas, any scoring systems. So that is calculative. And based on the methods of examination, you have visual, histological, physical, radiographic, digital. We'll talk about that. This is a mind map. Now, just look at this. This explains everything related to the age estimation methods that we study. In the prenatal, you have histologic, physical, and radiographic. In the children and adolescents, you have visual, radiographic, digital, physical, and histologic. In adults, you have also morphologic parameters added to it, along with the visual, biochemical, histologic, and radiographic. And if you look at the right side, it will be giving an explanation of all the methods. But for now, we need to understand what is present in these methods. So let's have a look. When we talk about prenatal, neonatal, and postnatal, well, we have, apart from calculating the weight of the dentition, we have other parameters which can be based on the ground sections of the teeth. You know what happens? That when we talk about the deciduous dentition, the mineralization, it starts very early, you know, in the intrauterine life. 20 to 28 weeks of intrauterine life it starts and the last deciduous molar it gets calcified by three and a half to four years of age everybody knows that we have studied that chronology and for the permanent teeth if we talk about the calcification it exceeds and it continues up to 20 to 25 years so we have a lot of time span but when we talk about the prenatal even if you take prenatal and the neonatal if we take the radiographs it would not be visible that much because the mineralization is very less, it's just in the first and the second deciduous molars, you will see a slight uh, fusion on the top of the molars, and you will see slight mineralization in the permanent first molar. So that will not be too much visible in the radiographs. So you can do the alizarin straining of the fetal tooth germs for that. Apart from that, if you have to see whether the child was a stillbirth or it was a living individual, when you have to uh, do the age assessment, then the neonatal lines play a role because there is a complete environmental change when the child comes from within the womb to the outside, from the intrauterine to the extrauterine life. And there the neonatal line is formed. Now it is based basically from the neonatal line, the incremental line patterns are calculated and it's based on the uh, amount of enamel or the amount of the calcification which is going to happen per day and you can easily divide it into the width. So the incremental lines also play a role in the age. Apart from that, then we have the, uh, if we have the radiographs, you can also look the radio, uh, the NOLA staging into the radiographs. So from the no crypt in the zero stage to a slight mineralization, to a tip mineralization, to complete crown formation, then the root initiation, then Two third of the one third of the root, two third of the root, then complete calcification. All these stages, if you're lucky, you'll be able to see in different stages of the child's life. So this is how we see in the radiographs. When we talk about children and adolescents, well, this is a very beautiful picture which I think everybody has seen whenever you study dentistry. So as I said, you know, when we talk about a multidisciplinary approach you can also include your undergraduates into it because you, when you start teaching them dentistry, the first thing that you teach them is chronology and you teach them this chart. 
this sure and masler chart was given in 1941 and imagine it's still applicable till now because it has given a staging after a few months you know in the from the intrauterine line to the 35 years of age it has given in complete sequence in a gap of few months or few years they have given the staging of mineralization of eruption you can see that eruption and you can easily tell okay this is the age but that is a very rough age because this is an atlas method you are just comparing okay you have a visualized uh, pattern of this in your mind and when you look at the cast you see okay this molar is erupting this incisor is erupting so this must be the age of the individual so that's how you calculate the age and that's many a times you know when you look at the board of uh, when you are called for the board for age estimation they'll just be giving you casts or they'll just be giving you radiographs and they'll tell you okay you write down what is the age that's not the right thing to do you can take this as a measure but as i said we should always combine it with the other methods also with a certain degree of accuracy but this is how Uh, and the chronology since we know when is the calcification beginning when is the crown completion time of eruption root completion everything you know the age this is imprinted in our mind right from the undergraduate level so it becomes very easy so since we all are dentists here if i ask you what is the age of the first um, picture so you will tell me okay this is like the first molar has erupted and you can see all the uh, dentist teeth have erupted so this, since this has just erupted so it might be you know uh, maybe 6 to 7 years okay the incisors are permanent and the first molar is permanent okay then if you look at the second stage the ugly duckling stage everybody knows the canines have not yet erupted maxillary canines have not yet erupted and you can still see a uh, a gap in the front teeth that is the ugly duckling stage it is a self correcting anomaly but if you tell you get a cast like this you will immediately say okay the child must be somewhere you know between 11 to 12 years if you look at the third the third molar is erupting and you can see the operculum there so you can say okay the the individual must be above 18 or you can say that so this is how we have been trained to look at the patients or the individuals mouth and look at the age the same way these kind of casts you get while you are estimating the age in any board that you sit the age estimation board that you sit and this is how the approximate age you reach but apart from that now the london atlas uh, has alkathani has also given this london atlas they have also quite modified it into because they have reduced the age gap where they have given the pictures in utero as well as uh, in the uh, postnatal uh, time so this is also a very extensive uh, atlas which is being really used these days and it is really really effective the accuracy is much more and moreover it is more automated because if you go uh, at their software it is very easy to implement and you can just put the tooth number and the staging based on the radiographs and you can easily uh, reach the age so as you progress you make it more simpler more easier more accurate and more automated that's what the london atlas has done when you talk about adolescents the merging method was given in 1973 this is still the most widely used method it has been used almost in all the ethnicities in all the um, age groups and uh, even indian there are a lot of indian studies also on the merging method and this primarily you know when i first um, saw this uh, article this was around 20 to 22 page article 1973 and when i started reading it it was so huge you know uh, by time i reached the end of the article it was really really difficult to comprehend so you know i but i fell in love with the uh, method so i thought why not simplify it let's look at the original demergen first and let's see how i simplified it further so this demergen method actually uses the mandibular seven teeth on the left side the from the central incisor to the second molar this is the given in the demergen article and there you have to see the calcification stages and you have to uh, you have to ascertain the age this is how i have simplified into it the demergen method into a comprehensive chart which is a dacc chart and it was published in year 2016 as I, and as i said that my student uh, vanshika jain was there in this article with me and this was done in her second year 
so we kind of made just one chart into it because we were tired of reading that whole article and going through various tables and it was so difficult to comprehend so we put all the developmental stages into one chart we drew them ourselves and we interpreted them ourselves and then we put the scoring of demergent into this and finally it was just one chart and if you look at this you can just fill the chart and the age comes to you so where to assess as i said you have to assess this demergent method on the left mandibular side from the central incisor to the second molar fdi notation we have given while the original demergent it used the incisor i m C that category, you know, they used those notations, but we use the FDI notation of three one to three eight. So how was it done? Step one, you take the orthopedomogram of the developing individual. Then this is basically the stage of development of the tooth. You have to match it to the uh, development of the tooth. this is basically the maturity score which is given separately in the original demergent method and finally when you reach that score you look into this male and female chart and you find out the age of the individual so you can see so many different tables so many different charts but when you look at the dacc how we did it this is how we have traced the uh, opg of the developing individual the mineralized area has all been traced and you can easily decipher it the white portion on the radiograph it represents the mineralized area this is basically for the undergraduates if you don't understand obviously everybody else understands it but the mineralized area is represented as the radio opaque area so we kind of trace only the radio opaque area and we only trace the permanent erupting teeth we don't trace the deciduous teeth in this and then you break this chart into sections and you start filling it so the first section is the demographics of the patient you fill the patient id gender data dentition present nationality very very important the date of birth is very important you know it so happens that uh, even in our orthodontic practice sometimes you know we get lack we uh, lack ourselves and we don't ask the date of birth of the patient what we write is the age is 11 years but we forget to ask the patient about the date of birth please be very specific whatever patients you are doing please note the chronological exact age of that patient because that is really going to help you in your further forensic research then this is the second part of that chart so as i said that we've already drawn the staging into this and you have traced that so now you just have to match the stage of the calcification of the tooth present in your tracing to this so if it's incisor that is 3 1 and 3 2 you have to look which staging is relevant and you have to circle the scoring yes there is one catch point here if it's a boy you have to take the left side scores if it's a girl you have to take the right side scores so you just have to circle the relevant scoring here for incisors both of them these are the staging that you have to take for canines this is the staging for premolars this is the staging and for molars 3 6 and 3 7 this is the staging just remember that if the opg that you have if is of male then you have to circle the left side of scores if it's of a female you have to circle the right side of the scores so this second part is completely filled now let's just quickly go through it as i said this is the staging this is how and it was a girl so we click the right side again this is a canine we click the right side this is a premolar we click the right side of the scoring molar we click the right side of the scoring based on this was what was the drawing and we matched it to this drawing then in section 3 since you have marked all the scores now you have to add up all the scores and you get a total score now comes the tables so you have got the total score and now you get the age you have to look at the corresponding age and since it's a girl so i am looking at the table which was meant for the girls so i get the total age of the individual 
so now i can either it's, if it's a comparative thing so i can i already know the age so i can see whether it is underestimation or overestimation and if it's i'm i'm doing a reconstructive thing then definitely i can give an approximate age of the individual so this is the calculated age we have also modified this chart for the modification of the demergen method which was given by shallet and demergen in 2004 and they how this was different from the dacc7 because dacc7 it included only till the second molar left mandibular second molar but when you talk about shallet and demergen modification they also include the third molar because the preliminary method was just meant to uh, you know uh, decipher the age till 16 years but since the eighth tooth is included in this the third molar is included in this method shallet and demergen modification so you can assess the age between 18 to 25 years also and we modified again this this again is modified into a chart and i have also given this total maturity score is here and you won't need tables for it because in the shallet and demergen method they've already given a regression formula which is also incorporated in this chart and ashit achara has also given indian formula for it which also we have incorporated in this chart so this is also a one stop shop for uh, age estimation between 18 to 25 years so again what what can be the use of these charts well i'm propagating these charts because they are so simple if we just send you the articles you can easily your undergraduates your postgraduates you know you can do it on a large huge data of sample and you can include it in the forensic odontology manuals because they're just one charts two charts that you can put and you know uh, it can be a good practice session or a good uh, forensic on field uh, session for the um, people who are doing age estimation and also this chart is being used in uh, punjab it's being used in um, uh, chandigarh it's being used in haryana all these are using it for the uh, forensic age estimation because they just take the chart in the board and they start filling it and it does not take a lot of time you can easily fill it in one go and then different levels of experience can be possible with this uh, radiograph because sometimes you know you feel that you need a certain amount of expertise for it but this is just with practice if you look at the charts and you keep on filling it again and again even the undergraduates will be able to do it so and we are holding so many workshops for it to make people aware of it and you can also use it in different conditions like cleft lip and palate or different syndromes you can easily start using it and you can start it right away we are also in the formulation of automation of these charts and also in the formulation of interpopulation study so you're most welcome to join our gang for this the other methods are um, originally you know nola gave uh, the staging system which is still being very uh, very much used demergen also used that and there was an appropriate fraction that was recommended in this uh, havico method was used and it was based on four reference teeth basically they said they used only the four teeth which don't show too much of variation like the molars and incisors so they used those willems definitely is being used nowadays uh, much more than demergen also because they feel that it is much more applicable it shows less overestimation or underestimation it's more accurate than the demergen method but you know these are all ethnicity based studies and you can do it in your own population and you can find out which of the method is much more applicable in your own population and definitely as i said that whenever you do age estimation you should not just concentrate on one method you should always use more than one method so you will easily come to know which one is more applicable then latest uh, the skimeries open apex method is also being used in children and adolescents and this is basically uh, kimri is uh, dr kimri has become also a very good friend of mine because i've been uh, conducting workshops with him and i also attended his age estimation uh, workshop in uh, cappadocia uh, 3 years back and ever since you know we've been uh, quite in touch and his uh, his methods also i feel are really really applicable and i would really recommend that whenever you do willems or demergen or dacc you should also be doing these uh, latest methods also as i said more than one method so take an opg and look at the seven mandibular teeth this open apex method is basically why it is called open apex because this is on developing teeth and you know that the apex is not closed so you have to locate the distance between the open apex and the length of the tooth so as i said this tooth length is measured 1 to 7 on all the teeth and then the open apices they are added for all the seven teeth and you get a variable s you put it in this 
formula and you get the age. You also add one for boys and zero for girls. So this is basically how the open apex works. This has also been tested a lot, even in Indian population. So you can do it in your own ethnic population. Like there was a researcher who was interested in doing this along with DACC in um, Orissa population. So you can do it in your own population and find out which one is more applicable, more accurate. So you can easily form the regression formulas for it. This is basically a whole culmination of all the standard charts that have been used and how the basis for comparison was formed, how the data collection was done, how the teeth were studied. This I've compiled it in my uh, chapter, which I've done uh, in uh, the book that we published uh, on Handbook of Forensic Odontology in 2018. Uh, this is the first edition of the book. And this was the chapter which gives you the whole uh, scenario about the um, age. Well, uh, the merchant system has also been upgraded and a lot of artificial intelligence has also been applied off late into it. And uh, uh, Dr. Patera has also published these two articles on um, artificial intelligence in the merchant system. Basically, what they've done is that the mandibular premolars, you know, they have uh, the emerging mandibular premolars, they have kind of automated the staging of those premolars on the radiographs. And it is basically based on all the, the, you first feed a lot of radiographs and you try to train the, um, uh, the machine learning aspect based on the convolutional neural network. And then you kind of find out, okay, this is the automated version of the staging of the mandibular premolars. Region-based segmentation, segmentation has also been done. So these are the few aspects which have been very recent and they've been applied and they're more accurate and more automated. Well, now we talk about adults. So yeah, at my age, getting lucky means finding my car in the parking lot. Otherwise it gets very difficult and flowers scare me, yeah. So um, of all the methods that we talk about in the adults, uh, morphologic, radiographic, histological, biochemical, visual, uh, the most commonly that is being, uh, or the most uh, prevalent is Gustafson's method, but which is very, very old also, but it's, it's very, very elaborate because it takes six parameters into consideration like attrition, secondary dentine deposition, apical migration, cemental apposition, root resorption, root dentine transparency. And for this, uh, it's not possible all in the radiograph, so you might need to have extracted teeth for it. And there is a scaling of points of zero to three and there's for the six criteria. So the maximum uh, scale that you can get is of 18 and zero to three is for each parameter that you can see. Attrition based on how much it has progressed, it is either zero or three. Dentine deposition, as we know, that secondary dentine deposition happens not only by the aging process, but also by various insults that happen on the tooth, like the mastigatory insults or any malocclusion insults or any environmental insults. So, this, so the secondary dentine deposition keeps on happening. It's a continuous process. And our pulp cavity, it keeps on getting narrower. So that also is a progressive phenomenon and it can be classified into zero to three. Then the apical migration, depending on the pedontal condition, the apical migration of pedontal ligament happens. So that also is classified into zero to three. Cemental apposition, because again, because of the insults and the mastigatory phenomenon and everything, there is a thickness of cementum which happens as the age progresses. And that also is classified from zero to three. Root resorption, definitely. Again, the external apical root resorption can happen. Trans classified from zero to three. So this is the Gustafson's method, but very, very extensive. Cementum annulation method is also used quite often when all the calcification and the staging is complete. And it's basically based on the regular apposition of the cementum. It is uh, basically a phenomenon which is seen under the light microscopy. And because of the presence of the acellular extrinsic fiber cementum AEPC, surrounding root, it uh, you know, appears as the alternate light and dark bands. Uh, there may be many uh, reasons for it, like function, avulsion, pathological process. And you might require some, uh, um, some armamentarium to, uh, to visualize it like bright field microscopy, polarized microscopy, phase contrast microscopy. You can see whatever is uh, there available in your own institute, you can easily make use of it. 
Dendine translucency, says, say there is a bang and ram phenomenon. Even the Indian formula, Ashita Jarasar has, uh, you know, modified it into a modified bang and ram formula. So if the length of the apical translucent dentine is greater than nine, then this uh, formula is happening. If it's less than nine, then this is happening. Again, other formulas like pulp tooth ratio of Camry 2004 method is also there. So all these methods, you know, you can apply any method, but you should always mention what is the level of accuracy in those methods. So we would recommend time and again that if you are doing ethnicity-based uh, studies or population-based studies, please apply two or three phenomena so that you know what is the level of accuracy for each uh, method. So this is uh, Dr. Cambry. And he has given a lot of methods like pulp tooth ratio, open apices, third molar maturity, carpal and epiphysis, epiphysial fusion, fourth cervical vertebra. So any of the methods can be applied for age estimation. Another phenomenon that you can use is tooth wear phenomenon in adults. So uh, there are few authors only who have worked on the tooth wear or the attrition uh, phenomenon. Uh, Kim gave the initial uh, phenomenon, but Lee and G, they, they modified it. And you can see this is the level of uh, pictorial representation of the attrition that they have given and the related formulas for it. Again, you can easily combine two or three phenomena and see which one is more applicable to your own population. You have biochemical methods like racemization of aspartic acid because the L amino acids, they're going to change to D and you can see uh, what is the level of transformation that can be seen in the histological methods. Radiocarbon dating, again, it is very, very um, specific because the um, it was given by Spalding in 2005 and it can precisely determine the chronological age based on the level of uh, radiocarbon or carbon 14, which is present in the tooth enamel. And it will, Con it will exactly represent the amount of the radiocarbon which was present in the environment at that time. So that's how the radiocarbon dating happens. Fluorescence can also be one of the methods that can tell you what is the age because uh, this is a phenomenon which has recently been explored, you know, that the UV light, when you apply it on the tooth, then it emits a wavelength which is longer and you can see the fluorescence and that can actually tell you how much of um, um, cementin deposition or the uh, dentine deposition is there. Dental color, okay, that can also be determined because the uh, time from the death also, the, the, the color of the teeth changes at different intervals, and that also can tell you, basically, it's because of the collection of disintegration products of blood in the dental tubules, and that can also give you an indication of what is the age. Artificial intelligence, again, here is also, it's also being um, applied in dental age estimation. So, uh, my journey, which I have taken, I'm going to take you through that. So I have first gained the knowledge about these various age estimation, not only the age estimation techniques. When I did uh, my uh, um, fellowship in forensic odontology under Dr. Ashita Acharya in 2016, so um, at 2018, I'm sorry. So at that time, we were exposed to different methods. So we kind of, you know, you have to try your hand on different methods and then you have to reach to the method which is most applicable. And since I'm an orthodontist, I have a regular access to the lateral cephalograms, to the OPGs, to the various tracings, to the models, to the 3D models, even the photographs. So they really play a good role when I talk about any of the forensic aspects, whether it is identification or age estimation. So this was the whole gang in the fellowship uh, area. And this was where, as I said, when I went to Cappadocia, uh, this is Dr. Cambry's age estimation workshop. So I've gathered knowledge from the stalwarts themselves. And then uh, we worked together as I introduced my team in the very first slide of Taman, Dr. Vanchika, Dr. Deepika. So we started working together because we found a common ground, you know, to, uh, to apply all that knowledge that we had gained from various aspects and to apply it and publish our work. So this is 2016, the ACC chart got published. It was also applied in the Haryana population. This got published. Then it was also validated in very recent 2019. Then DCC 8 got published again in 2018. And this is a very recent um, article which I published in 2021. This is again our team uh, uh, which has been introduced to you. And orthodontist and forensic dentistry, one of the roles is age estimation because we have access, as I said, to a lot of radiographs, to a lot of models, to a lot of um, um, uh, um, 
uh, photographs. So when we talk about the photographs, radiographs and models, these are the ones which can actually tell you, uh, give you a lot of raw material to determine the age. And when I talk about multidisciplinary approach, sometimes you know you would also like to do it on 3D radiographs. So even the oral radiology persons may be a lot of uh, help to you. Then the oral pathologist can be so much of help to you when you talk about cemental manipulations, you talk about neonatal lines, you talk about any histologic uh, parameter. So there can be a lot of uh, help to you. So as I said, please don't restrain yourself. Don't limit yourself. Please open your horizons, formulate a team because that is the way to go forward. It's not only you. And nowadays you can also involve uh, the people from the computer background, because everything is going on to machine learning, to artificial intelligence. And if you have to automate even your own charts, you need a lot of help from them. So it is definitely a multidisciplinary approach. Then you disseminate in the form of uh, workshops and lectures. So you see again, my gang, which is there in the crime, all the crimes with me. So uh, we went to so many different places all across India, even to Bangladesh and different uh, countries. So this is a lot of, uh, uh, good memories that we have and we disseminate our knowledge in these workshops and lectures. Ongoing work we've also tried the Cambridge Open Apex method uh, very recently in the uh, European and Indian formula in Delhi and NCR population and since this was a very small uh, sample study only on 100 uh, radiographs so 50 males and 50 females so the pilot study results have come out to be that the males show underestimation by 0.86 years and the European formula underestimation, it shows by 0.9 years. So Indian formula is definitely more applicable. Data of females definitely shows that the Indian formula has underestimation by 0.5 years and the European formula is underestimation by one year. So definitely the Indian formula is more applicable. So we are using this uh, to formulate large sample studies and uh, which I think is the right way to go. The combined data says that the Indian formula underestimates by 0.7 years and the European formula is underestimates by 0.9 years. So you can also apply it in your own population. Currently, we're also doing the dental age estimation in cleft lip and palate. And uh, since uh, this is also one of the areas or arenas which I work very regularly in the clinical practice, we give a lot of appliances in these cleft patients. But many a times, you know, these cleft patients are from the backgrounds where uh, they don't have the age related data with them. It's very difficult to extract chronological age from them. And we want to find out whether we can rely on the eruption status of the teeth for these kind of patients. So we are comparing the cleft patients to the normal patients and believe me, not even one Indian study has been done on this. So we are in the process of using the DACC chart along with Willems and the other methods and we will be able, we'll be soon coming up with the results of this study. But it has also been used in other ethnic populations like the Turkish population, Egyptian population. They have used it in their own cleft lip and palate patients. And definitely they have seen many of the studies, they support that the dental development in these patients is slightly slower than the normal healthy patients. Apart from that, you can also have the other craniofacial syndromes, which can show the dental development to be, um, to be not in sync with the healthy uh, patients, uh, like the Down syndrome patients. Many a times, you know, these Down syndrome patients do not have the uh, age-related data because they are many a times in very uh, early, early stage, they are put for adoption. And when they're put for adoption, the adoption houses, they don't have the exact data with them. So it's a big, big problem. And you should target even these syndromes if you are doing any age assessment study. So right now when I am talking, I am side by side with every slide telling you, okay, these are the research options that, because that is also one of the, uh, one of the criteria that I had mentioned in my very beginning in the content of the lecture, that I'll be showing you what are the research options that you can avail uh, with this lecture. Archaeological evidence also, a lot of uh, methods have been applied for the archaeological evidence, so even for the fossil evidence. So basically, the even the dental traits, uh, the metric traits can be used for the uh, dental age estimation. So basically, but for that also, you need to have uh, data on a large sample, like the Moris had done uh, two longitudinal large sample data studies, even they are being used for the fossil evidence and the archaeological evidence till date. 
then the comparison with skeletal age assessment well again this is a, a topic very close to my heart because this is almost in every patient that we have to take a lateral cephalogram we have to take an opg so we are used to looking at the cervical vertebrae of the patient to know what is the growth status of the patient we uh, look at the cervical vertebrae we assess the cervical vertebral maturation index cvmi status and that is present in our history records for every patient we measure that and as i said that's one of the skeletal age assessment methods there can be other skeletal age assessment methods also like the hand raised radiographs or the clavicles clavicles have come up in a big way because but they're not available you need specific radiographs for it lateral cephalograms because we are already taking we don't need to expose the patients for additional radiographs so we assess the cvmi status and we compare it with the dental age we can do those comparative studies also frontal sinus also can be one of the parameters that you can look for in age estimation for hand raised radiographs definitely we have uh, the cvmi the smi status that we that we see then the biochemical method now you can compare you know if you want again if you want the research options from me you can either compare the dental age uh, two methods and you can compare one skeletal age method and one biochemical method because we also we have registered a uh, my team has registered one of the um, systematic reviews in prospero and we are doing the biomarkers in body fluids as indicators of skeletal maturity on radiographs so since we have now compiled all the biomarkers you can't believe how helpful they can be to tell you what is the exact growth status of any patient and the maximum that we have come across till now is igf growth hormone creatinine alkaline phosphate so if you're looking for research options you can easily take one of these along with one of the skeletal uh, physical parameters and one of the dental parameters so there can be various research options that you can have extra of hand rulikin pile thymen gills ratibin tana white house basically they also work on two uh, methods like uh, uh, you know the atlas method of rulikin pile still applicable i don't believe it's it's so old but still applicable now they had given an atlas where photographs of uh, the radiographs were, are given of of the left hand and you just have to match your radiograph of the hand with that and you can tell the age that is again a visual method a comparative method but then uh, this was again converted into a scoring system by tanner white house so by bone by bone the scoring system is there you have to add the scores and you'll get the age so skeletal age so that is also one of the scoring method as i had mentioned earlier even the in the dental you had two methods comparative and scoring method in the comparative method you have shuren masler chart the london atlas where you just have to look at the eruption status of your own radiograph and look at the chart and you will come to know okay what is the age the other like the mergin and all they will resort to some scoring method like kemri and all they'll give you some regression formulas so both the methods are being used for skeletal age also and dental age also one is comparative and one is scoring apart from that like as i said we use the cvmi that is a cervical vertebral maturation in this second third and uh, fourth vertebra are mostly considered and different staging system are being given automation of these have also been done so as i said that every method now is being automated so you know try to look for the computer specialist very fast in your team because definitely if you're going to apply a method you will definitely think of automating that and for that you need those specialists in your team skeletal age also has been automated and artificial intelligence has been uh, given into the bone age assessment techniques also now once we have culminated all the dental the skeletal age estimations now how do we give a final report because ultimately that's what your main uh, arena you have to give a report which is uh, in writing so what are the various criteria that you should have as a component of those reports one can be introduction one can be inventory of evidence method of analysis opinions and conclusion in the introduction okay how the case came to you what were the records that were given the inventory it comes into that that what is the stage of the teeth that you got stage of the radiograph that you got stage of the study model that you got or even the photographs that you got you have to write down everything every detail that you have got then if you have the age the height weight anything of the individual that you are studying then you have to even write that then the techniques that you are applying for age estimation you have to write that and you have to write the level of accuracy of each method that you apply 
So that's also very, very important. And it's all the more applicable that if you have those methods being applied already in your own population, then please look for those methods and, and write only their accuracy levels because they are more applicable. So two, two stand, standard deviations you have to measure. Disclaimer, any disclaimer that you want to put that, okay, if any new evidence comes uh, in due course of time, then you will be able to change your conclusion or your opinion based on the new and upcoming evidence. That also is, you can add as a disclaimer. So the summary is that you write the H by two methods. This is the accuracy. This is a standard deviation. And I will be able to change it if any new evidence comes. This is how you write the report. So take home message, I think I completed it on time for the first time. I always over exceed my time, but I, today I thought that I'll stick to it. So this take home message is basically just based on my own personal experience of my team, of myself. After working so much in this field, this is what uh, you have to look. Find your own niche. Like I'm comfortable working on radiographs, working on study cars, working on... Um, skeletal age parameters. So I will create that as my niche. But if you are an oral pathologist and you want to study which is related to the histology, you want to study which is related to the ground sections of the teeth, which I'm really scared about. So you can uh, look for that niche. You have to start very early. Start, plan very small studies, you know, maybe in 50 patients or 40 patients, anything. Start somewhere, start early. I would definitely love that after this lecture, if two or three of you, you know, take my mail ID and you tell me, okay, ma'am, we have started this. At least you start somewhere. Target the ethnicity driven studies. Time and again, I've mentioned during my lecture that this is very, very important because dental age or skeletal age in one population will never be similar to the next population. So you have to look for the methods, look for the criteria which are more applicable in your own population. Use more than one method. Again, this also I've highlighted throughout my lecture. Not one method can ever be applicable to your own population. Maintain the dental and the radiographic records because they are storehouse of information. They are the ones, catalog it properly. Like I said, you know, write the chronological age. Definitely ask the chronological age of every patient. Write it down. Maintain the dental and radiographic records so that any time... Maybe you can want to do a multicentric study. So you have your own data available. Or even if you want to combine all your own data and do a study. So you should have that catalog very nicely in your own institute. Always record the chronological age and formulate an interdisciplinary team. It's always fresh because they'll give you fresh perspectives. So always formulate an interdisciplinary team. Ask for help. If you are stuck somewhere, we are there to hold your hand. Ask for help. As we can help you, we will definitely help you. And if you, we know somebody who can help you, we'll definitely refer you to that. So that's my take home message here. These are my references. And this is again, a picture of the chart that uh, I've published. And for queries, this is my mail ID, my website. So let's make a new beginning and let's start very early, very soon, even if it's a short study. I'll stop my share now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Seriously, this is the best presentation I think so ma'am I have ever attend. And like, I would uh, like to thank you ma'am for this and please accept this uh, ritual uh, appreciation uh, small certificate for you. Thank I'll you send so it through uh, um, email. And I think we have got few uh, queries ma'am so let me read that but i would love it uh, if uh, you know people start working in this domain this was the whole idea behind this lecture yes ma'am uh, okay from venkatesh jayaraman we got a uh, Questions, ma'am. Shall I? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What's the AE method you advise for children, adults, and for uh, geriatric persons? Okay, so this is basically they are asking me in short about the whole lecture. Okay, I'll do that. So as I said, I had presented a mind map, if you remember, in my 13th or 14th slide. 
so that mind map gives you the whole idea you know as i said there's not one method which i recommend you have to choose your own method you have to try two or three methods and see which one is more applicable like for neonates you can look for neonatal lines you can look for alizarin staining you can look for um, weight of the developing dentition for children and adolescents definitely because i'm working on dacc charts i find them extremely useful and you know comprehensive you can use them along with the other methods like kemri's open apex method you can use that you can use two or three combinations like willems demogen and kemri's method in children and adolescents but if you talk about geriatric definitely i would recommend that uh, you should go for the attrition li and g uh, method that's that's really applicable so you can try that and you can also try the pulp tooth area ratio of kemri you can try that also in geriatric and uh, another question is uh, what is your opinion or preferred method for legal cases like child abuse cases legal See, method child, okay because as i said if you are presenting something on the legal scenario then definitely you have to use more than one method so you try using again my answer will be the same if you are using uh, kemri's method or you are using uh, kemri's open apex method or you're using willems or demogen you have to write down the accuracy with two standard deviations in that and you have to also give a justification if in in your population some indian formula has been derived please start using the indian formula because it is more close closely applicable to your population so for the legal scenario anything that you use it has to be with the level of accuracy and with standard deviations yes ma'am then what is your opinion about biochemical methods like acetic acid racemization uh see um uh, maybe uh, because i don't do that personally i am not a histology in the ground section <laughs> person but if definitely i know because there are people even in names uh who are working on this uh, racemization and they have found very accurate results so if you want to try it try it on a few tooth sample extracted tooth sample that definitely we can help you with it uh, means your orthodontics department can help you with it and you can look for premolars which they extract and you can start doing that mm -hmm. so it's really applicable because uh, i've seen studies from aims itself in indian population with where they are applicable uh, mm -hmm. and maybe i forgot to mention that you can also do dna methylation uh, in pulp mm -hmm. and that can also be used for uh, age estimation then he is asking about few age estimation method by radiological age estimation method that you are going you are advising for children adults and geriatric persons so radiological definitely as i said uh, demogen is really really applicable willems dacc charts and again kemri's method kemri's method when you start using it you need to download uh, image j which is a free software you can start using it's a very very simple method you can just measure it the the distance between the open apex and the length and you have to calculate the ratio and you can put it in the uh, directly you can put it in the um, formula so radiological for children and adolescents for geriatric again as i said these are uh, the attrition uh, method which i said that is a visual method it's not a radiographic method but if you want to use a radiographic method then you can try the kemri's pulp tooth ratio method so you can do that even for uh, uh, the geriatric you can maybe not geriatric but adult patient you can use a third molar index also that's also a good method but third molar also like till some uh, 25 years we can ma'am but after that the... not geriatric yes. but for geriatric you can definitely use the uh, pulp tooth ratio method. yes ma'am and my suggestion is like uh, we can uh, go for la uh, like uh, anatomical landmarks anatomical landmarks in that is yeah that's beyond the scope of this but since you're just asking me about this but then as i said age estimation is huge topic you can go for the gonial angle you can go for so many different bones then you can do that yes. it's very very helpful yes and then the suture closures also it will be helpful suture closure happens quite early you know quite but yes we can i guess we can do that definitely as i said age estimation is huge yes, it's not possible to you know culminate it in one this thing but yeah dental age estimation definitely as they asked so i answer Yes, ma'am. That is uh, that's all the question and uh, these things. And uh, I'm happy that Emilio sir was have 
watching this for like from the beginning to till now yeah. and the sir has put a message like uh, yeah very comprehensive here, dr also here dr sonali is here so thank you so much everyone if i missed anybody i'm yes ma'am kind excuse thank you vinita ma'am and thank you sonali kadam ma'am and other shubhoth and another prasad and i want to thank first of all i want to thank uh, dr raman choudhary sir yeah and then dr i suggested <laughs> our professor <laughs> emily <And my> team <laughs> so yeah yes ma'am it was a nice presentation ma'am thank you so much for your time and uh, i just like to thank you and aman choudhary sir and my uh, Uh, team and my department also for this, and I like to thank my uh, Dr. Deepak Nalaswamy sir for this uh, giving this opportunity for uh, so many people to present, and my institution also, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I think I can, I can end it. I can. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>